one person who still wants food. Okay. Like you want me to introduce you? Okay. okay. Y'all, y'all go ahead and keep on eating. I think we've got um, plenty of food from Georgia Pacific, and appreciate y'all coming out. My name is Bo Bourne, and I appreciate all y'all having an interest in this and coming out today and joining us. Uh, a real pretty day, and food's good, and and the fellowship is good. So um, thank y'all for coming out. I just want to mention a few people uh, that make instrumental in this whole process. Uh, it's hard to really kind of know where to start, uh, so I, I, but I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to maybe just recognize a few people. Then I've got uh, Bill Gatlin from Mississippi Department of Archives and History that we're going to get up here in a minute and let him say a few words, and then I'm going to turn it over to Kay. Um, uh, you know, I guess the, Bill Gatlin, I, I'm going to start there. Um, this, this whole fault originated about four years ago. Um, based on a conversation back in the late 80s with Anita Clinton, I'm sure a lot of y'all remember her, um, she just mentioned in passing, she, she said, you know, this road is one of the oldest roads in the Mississippi Territory days. And I really didn't, I guess, I have a perspective on that. I really know what that meant. And, but it did stick in the back of my mind. And then about two years ago, some of us went up and sat down with Bill Gatlin at Archives and History and started visiting about the road, and it just sent um, several of us on a journey to kind of learn more about it. And lo and behold, we find out that the road is one of the original roads um, in our territory before we were a state. Uh, you had the Natchez Trace, and you had St. Stephen's Road, which a lot of people in Lawrence County know about the St. Stephen's Road. And then River Road. River Road connected uh, Colbert, um, Cooper's Ferry up in um, Monticello down to Ford's Ferry down in Sandy Hook. Uh, it was one of the first roads that went north and south in the Mississippi Territory. The road was commissioned in 1811 and was built somewhere between 1811 and 1816. The, um, the earliest map that's been found is an 1816 map that is... Um, um, shows just three roads on it, and those are three I mentioned, and it's a Louisiana map. Um, and so, you know, the process kind of went from there. The, so this is really about the 200th year of River Road, anniversary of River Road. And then the White Sand Creek Bridge is, uh, this is the 100-year anniversary. Actually, yet next year will be in 1913. And so um, I guess I, you know, really like to thank Bill and, and, and uh, for, for what all he did in the process. And then, um, uh, you know, Archie Ross and Steve Garrett and, and the supervisors, they were I instrumental in, in uh, understanding what, what our history means and pre appreciate, appreciate them very much. Um, and then also, I'd like to recognize uh, the Mississippi, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, Pearl River uh, Electric Power Association and Danny Wilkes and um, Randy Wallace. They, they, uh, their, their board met and they uh, adopted the road and, and uh, Randall Mullen um, with MDOT got the two signs up today on either end of the, of the historic district and so really appreciate what the, uh, the Power Association uh, has done in, in adopting the road as well. Um, and then I, 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 uh, another part of the story that, that, that needed to be told um, is uh, China Lee. And I sat down with Rosetta Williams and John Williams about two years ago. I asked him the story of the, um, of the church. And uh, Rosetta had written a, a, a little booklet that tells the story of the China Lee Church and how it came to be. And uh, so I really, really thank Rosetta and John uh, for adding that part of our story. Um, let's see. Um, and then... Um, you know, I mentioned uh, Randall and MDOT. They, we're going to move down a little bit later, uh, those that can, to the uh, the landmark, the um, uh, sign that is down by the bridge, and we're going to have a little photo opportunity to move down there. And, and so Randall and, the, and the Mississippi Department of Transportation, uh, they're the ones uh, that place those signs all around the state. So we appreciate them coming out and doing that. 
Um, and then also, uh, probably the most person, most important person, really that brought this together today, and and also ushered the whole course with um, the National Register and that process is Kay Allen. Kay is the president, as you all know, of the Lawrence County Historical Society. And if there's anybody that's a go-getter, it's Kay. Um, and I want Kay to, to say a few things, but uh, before we do that, I want to get Bill Gatlin from Mississippi Department of Archives and History to come up and, and just say a few words about um, what it means to be on the National Register. Well, thank you all. We're really happy at Crazy Pentecost. My colleague and I are, are really happy to be here. It's my first chance to, to visit. I have seen lots of photographs and lots of maps and lots of drafts of, of the nomination. Bo and I worked together uh, for a long time to, to, to get that into shape. The National Register of Historic Places is the official list of places that, that we as a people in the United States have, have decided are worthy of preservation whether they're buildings, whether they're uh, objects, whether they're structures like a bridge uh, or uh, a site like a road or, or a district, um, are places that have um, stood the test of time, that are significant based on their history or based on their uh, engineering or architectural merit. And when Bo first came to see us, you know, I was a little hesitant, you know, it's a, it's a road, you know, it's not the Natchez Trace, you know, we didn't, we, you know, everybody knows about that one, but as, and Bo's the one that did the, did the work on it, you know, convinced us that in fact this is uh, an historic uh, area of Mississippi, an historic, um, what we would call a <clears throat> linear resource, you know, from one end to the other. And so we got, to, we, we went through the process. What that really involved was, was, was drafting a nomination that meets requirements that are issued by the National Park Service. Now, I'm a state bureaucrat, and, you know, so I, I know a little bit about bureaucracy, but these federal guys, they know all about bureaucracy. So we had to make sure that, that our nomination, you know, met all the requirements, that we established a, 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 a good argument for why this is historic, why it meets the, the criteria. You know, we had to come up with some good photography. We had to come up with maps. And, um, and once, and Bo and I, I don't know, we went back and forth a few times till, till we were happy that we, we had it. Uh, we took it to our state review board that meets in, in Jackson. They approved it. And then it went to Washington, D.C., to the keeper of the National Register of Historic Places. And they agreed with us that River Road in Lawrence County is in fact a place that's worthy of preservation. It is in fact a place that is a, an important marker of our history. We're architectural historians and, and you know, museum people have artifacts. Archivists have paper. Architectural historians have buildings and structures and roads and bridges. And we think that those are important because they tell a story about where we came from. And we think that's important, you know, today to know that story. So uh, in Washington, D.C., maintained there in the, in the offices of the National Park Service is our nomination. Uh, anybody who's interested in seeing it, I think Bo's got a website where you can find it. It's also on our department website if you, uh, you know, go in there. And um, you can see the whole nomination. It's, it's uh, downloadable and copyable. See all the photographs. Um, the one thing that you know, we had to work with uh, folks to make sure they understood that the National Register of Historic Places is an honorary designation. It doesn't have any, um, it doesn't put any restrictions on the property owners. So the, the property owners, if you have a house that's on the National Register, you know, you can do what you want with it. You don't have to, um, it's not a, a uh, it's not the kind of thing where there's restrictions. That's one of the kind of myths that floats around out there. You know, don't put your house on that national register because you won't be able to change the light bulbs. <laughs> you know, that's, that's just not true. But, um, you know, we think it's important to have that, to have that record, to have it documented that this is a place that is uh, significant to our history as a people 
And, uh, you know, Bo's being modest about it, but uh, he, he's the one that did the work. And, and uh, you know, I just sort of process things. But we're really happy to be here, and we thank you for the opportunity. Sometimes the things that we do are a little controversial, and we don't, you know, get the thanks that we would like to get. But anytime we can get a good catfish dinner, we're happy. <laughs> get Kate to come forward and close it out for us. That's kind of dangerous to get me on the microphone. <laughs> I always I always have more to say than I have time to say, huh, John? Yep. <laughs> Isn't this a wonderful, wonderful day for Lawrence County? I've been grinning and smiling from ear to ear all week getting ready for this. We have the other people here. We have the Daily Leader representative over here. And this lady keeps taking pictures and notes, and I don't know where she's from. Tell us. I'm with the uh, Supervisors Association. Oh, wonderful. Mr. Mr. We're going to get in the Supervisors Magazine. <laughs> Great. Now, who else? We have John Carney and JJ that do the uh, Eat Drink Mississippi. We have some sample copies up here for you to take with you. If you have not seen it, you really need to get a copy because we're so proud of that Monticello publication. Have a lot of wonderful things going on and all of you people that are out there today have a part in it and I, my little friend over here, Miss Swayze Pentecost, I met her a couple of years ago and she just makes me feel young. I love to work with her. Those, the uh, archives and history people have been super in everything that we do. You know we're going to do, or we're in the process, going to open bids Monday for the floors in the Civic Center that the Archives and History is sponsoring with us. So we're very excited about that. You all would not believe what the Civic Center means to the community. Now I do want to say this about our sign down here. You probably don't think you have a lot to do with things that happen but those signs are $1,800. And I thought, where in the world, Lord, are we going to get $1,800? Well, we have our yearly attic sale where we make between eight and $1,000. Guess how much money we made last year? $1,800. So when we step out to do something, the good Lord's on our side. And all of you that do the light, least little thing, helps us to, to reach our goals. We have other things that are going on in the county that we're excited about, and I want you to know that we have people come in every day to the museum, and it takes three hours to just do the tour of Cooper's Ferry Park, the Civic Center, and the Longino property. Three hours. Now, you know they're going to have to eat. They're going to have to buy cat gas. They all come with a purse or a billfold. So the, as much as we can do, in our historical endeavors makes our town and our county even more prosperous. We were talking, John and I were talking the other day and naming people who came in here as retired people. Of course, John and I are, and Charles and Merle are, and just think of all that they do. And then we have Johnny and Cynthia Taylor over here that came and retired here. And we just feel like we need to get out there and get all the retired people we can get because they make such a difference in our community. It is just a fabulous thing. I feel like, I just don't know how to tell you how I feel about being able to do the things, the few things, are leading people to do what we do. And I think we should continue. I think we should all join hands and work even harder. And we have a Douglas cabin that is now being restored in Sontag, Mississippi, that was the original cabin of the first Douglas that came in here. And they... They, they told me they were, every Saturday they're doing what they call mudding, and I thought, well, what in the world is that? They meet up, and they get out there and cook dinner on Saturdays, and they're chinking the logs. And I want to go so bad, I can't stand it. <laughs> but it seems like every time something comes up that I'm not be able to get there and chink the logs. I just think that's a fabulous thing. But we do have a lot of things that we are planning to do we have a lot of things that we're involved in now. And we want all of you to join hands and join forces with those of us that work with the Historical Society to just come on and join in, and I promise you, you'll have the time of your life. It's like being, I don't know, a child again, you know, when you can get out there and smile and be happy and have parties like this. Isn't this great? And we are so grateful. We are so grateful to GP 
to serve that wonderful fish that they're so famous for. That was a lot of trouble for them to go to, and don't think we aren't happy about it, are we? But Bo is my new best friend. <laughs> He's just been fabulous to get all this going and and to organize it to, so for it to become on the national the uh, national register of historic places. And we have a lot of these places. I don't know if people really understand how important Lawrence County is to the Mississippi history. It's amazing. We are backwoods. Did y'all know that? We are really backwoods people. We're the first people in the backwoods of the state. They had all those wonderful mansions on the river and Mississippi River, and then they had all the wonderful places on the coastline that where our, our first uh, people came in to explore Biloxi and all the coastline. But we are the original backwoods people. That's Ooh. something to be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to thank Archie for all that he has done to get this going, and thank you, boys, for coming today that, that did all the cleaning up on River Road. It just looks great, and we appreciate that. I hope I haven't left out anybody, but everybody that is here today is an important person in our historical society, and we're going to have some more parties. We'll have a big one when we get our floors done in the Civic Center. So I love a party. So we'll be having more as we go along. And it's so great for y'all to come out today. And thanks the cooks for helping us with the desserts. And look for some things in the paper about the Longino property for our Christmas open house. We're going to have, have music to go along with it. So that's something you won't want to miss. We've done a lot of redo work on the Longino property thanks to GP. Uh, we've we've done a lot of things that you don't see. They're used. They're the, it's the, under a, the construction of repairs that had to be made. So we've got a real strong front porch, and we have a real strong step. So that's going to be our stage, and you'll want to come and enjoy that. Everybody is always invited. My, I, I should say, our Watts people. My great great my great grandfather and grandmother traveled this road, which was a sadness to the ones they left behind, to go to Poplarville so that Grandpa Charlie could survey the timber in Poplarville. So they could cut all that after they cut all of our timber up here. They went down there to cut the timber to send it to South America to build the Panama Canal. So then my great uncle was thirteen and guess what his job was? He had to drive the cattle right by himself from over here at Arm, just behind the Arm Church, all the way down to Poplarville. Can you imagine a little 13-year-old boy having to do that now? So we're not far. We're just not far from who we were when this road was a very important road in traveling from actually Jackson, which it wasn't even Jackson then. It was uh, Lafleur's Bluff, all the way down to below Columbia. We're happy to have them. They're sitting in the sun over there. You can reach over and give them. We're happy to have our Marion County Historical Society. They are as important to the history of Mississippi as Lawrence County is. So is Covington County. I don't see anybody here, but Covington County was a real, really important part. Of it. I'm not going to talk anymore. I just want to tell y'all we're so happy to have you. And we have had such a great day today, and I want you to really enjoy visiting. And please eat all that dessert over there. <laughs> But thank you, Bo. This cabin is just exciting, and it's historic in itself. You may want to tell them how it came about. No, you don't want to? <laughs> it was built during the Depression, and a company came, I'll go ahead. A company came through here with, with, with cabin plans, and they would cut your own timber and build your own cabin. And I don't know a whole lot of details, but I'm going to look it all up because that's just fascinating to me. And it's still in the Bourne family, and we're so happy that it's still in existence and it's such an historical place in our county. But thank you so much for coming and thank everybody who had a part in this and has a part in anything that we do as historical society. Thank you. And thank John for getting, helping me do all these things that I do. I know we want to get some photos down by the um, 
historic marker and we want to get the papers down there and and so um, we talked a little bit earlier but I guess it's just everybody please eat some more and, and make yourself at home and we'll just kind of make whoever's interested we can move down there and if not that's fine too so uh, thank y'all again thank you